And after that, how have the old influenced the young? BBC One Northern Ireland assesses the state of minds of Ulster ceasefire babies. That's at nine o'clock. Hello and welcome to Cash in the Attic, the show that digs up antiques at home and then polishes them up for profit at auction. Today we're in glorious Cambridge, which is not only one of the most beautiful cities in the UK, but home to one of its most prestigious universities. And not that I'm biased, much better than Oxford. Famous people who've attended the University at Cambridge include funny man John Cleese, stellar physicist Stephen Hawking and broadcaster Jeremy Paxman. Well, with such illustrious and intelligent company, let's hope that our antiques today get first-class honours when they go under the hammer at auction. to meet Joan Godwin and her marvellous extended family because they're clearing out their house ready for a trip off piste down under. Joan has surrendered her home to daughter Fiona and her five children. She loves the hustle and bustle of a young family around her but a clutter clear out could give her some peace and quiet. Coming up, will Joan's antiques even make their way to auction? Is it time to cash them in? I think I'd, I'd want to think rather carefully about that. Do the teenagers of the family appreciate modern art? Do you like it then? It's OK, yeah. It's a bit confusing though because this dog is going backwards. When auction day arrives, is the family in for a shock? <laughs> and with their mountains of collectibles, will the Godwins scale new auction heights when the gavel goes down? Ah, uh, hello. Oh, Cambridge, Cambridge. Isn't it marvellous? My old alma mater. Yeah, I know, you went round here. I, I did, yeah, it was very good. Look at this house, isn't it wonderful? Beautiful house, full of lovely children. Great, that's all right. And lots to find, lots of lovely antiques today. Oh, yes. You excited? Of course I am, yeah, go let me in. OK. First time I've been to Cambridge. Thanks. Really? Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful here. Hello, everybody. Hello. I think this is possibly the largest <laughs> gathering of rummages I've ever seen on the show. <laughs> Spectacular. Look at you all, beaming and ready to go. <laughs> Who's in charge? Joan? Yes. Fiona? Yes. Ah, excellent. Why Hello. have you called us in? What, what's our plan? Well, I'd like to raise some money and say that my five grandchildren and possibly their parents <laughs> then go to New Zealand. Oh, have a really good very time. Very good. So what are you going to be doing down in New Zealand? Well, I think we'll possibly be going at um, the snow season, so it'd be nice to do a bit of skiing, and I think the teenagers would like to do some snowboarding. Way cool. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Are you going to go skiing too? Yes. What about you? Do you ski? You do. Yay! <laughs> Fantastic. That's, that's quite a lot of you to transport down the other side of the world. How much is that going to cost? I think, Thousands, I yeah. Think. But, Thousands. Right. But, but I think we'll settle for 3,000 as a start. We'll aim for 3,000. 3,000? Mm -hmm. And you've got lots of stuff in the house? Yes. But luckily we've got lots of hands, and many hands make light work, so <laughs> let's split up and have a look around. Let's go look! Joan and her late husband originally inherited this house from her mother-in-law, and looking around, there are beautiful antiques in every room. Three generations of hoarding have given us plenty to rummage through for the family's trip of a lifetime. Luckily for the Godwins, Paul Hayes has been traversing the peaks and troughs of the antique world since he was a teenager. He's just the man to generate some cash for our skiing adventure. Ah, oh, this is an amazing house. There's so much of it and so much to sort of sell, which is good. But what we need is an antique expert, and I've got one hidden down here. Follow me, team. Oh, hello. How are you? All right? Hello. Hello, hello, hello. This is a big old team today. Yes. The half of them. Thanks for coming. The rest of the children are out <laughs> scouring the house of things to sell. Right. Well, I must say, it's a marvellous house you have. I mean, this desk just suits the room, doesn't it? I think so. So where does it come from, June? It belonged to my mother-in-law. She bought it when she first came to the house, which was in 1937. Well, it's a lot older than the 1930s. Hmm. It, was a, it was an antique desk when she bought it. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is made from bird's eye maple, which is very rare, actually. 
and it looks like Tiny Bird's Eye. That's where it gets its name from. Uh, but it's by a great manufacturer. And if you have a look inside here, all the good makers would put their name on a piece. This one's actually Johnson and Jeans. They're quite a famous London maker. Uh, originally, they were Johnson and Dupe up until about 1840. So that tells me this is made after that date. The only drawback, actually, is the fact that these are not the original handles. Aren't they? No, these have been replaced. Originally, these would have been wooden ones. And what can happen, they can get damaged. And I think when your mother-in-law bought it, it's possibly been restored. And these are typical 1930s handles. But they're still old, then, in that case. I like the fact you're defending your, your just <laughs> bitter energy. That's good. That is still <laughs> nice. <laughs> How much do you think it's worth, Rosie? Try out your uh, valuing skills. Um... I don't really have a clue, but something like £200. Do you remember where you are? Uh, maybe about 300 More. Higher or lower? Well, a little bit more than you're thinking. I'd say at least £600, maybe up to 1000 on the day. I would have hoped for 1000 <laughs> Yeah, well, that's a very good start. But there are some lovely things in this house. I mean, it's a treasure chest. It really is. So, <laughs> shall we press on? Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready to go when you are. Fantastic. Let's go. Well, I'd always thought that the handles were really rather pretty and I didn't realise that they were not the original ones. But at least they've been there since the 1930s, so I suppose that makes them quite old, doesn't it? If we get to the top end of that estimate, it'll be a huge chunk of today's target. Our army of rummagers spread out throughout this wonderful house, investigating anything they think has profit potential. It's not long till Oscar finds an antique he'd like to put his stamp on. Hi, Paul, look at this. Let's have a look what we've got. There's books and things stamps, everywhere, isn't there? Yeah. Some stamps. Here we are. This is this your collection, then? No, I prefer football and stuff. You like prefer that. football? Yeah. I prefer. <laughs> well, that's a good answer, right? So, so, who collected all these? I think my granddads or great grandmas or something. Well, these are wonderful. If you have a look here, this is the very start of postage as we know it here in Britain. And the very, very first stamp was called the Penny Black. Mm. But they changed the colour. And the reason was is that when it went to the post office, they franked it and put this Maltese cross, this symbol on it here. And because it was black, sometimes you would get away with not being stamped. And you'd oh, I need to reuse it. Or, yeah. See, ah, see, kids never change, do they? Yeah. That's right. You thought of that all on your own. Yeah. So what they did, they changed it to red. And that's what these ones are. And then for the heavier parcels, we have a two penny blue, like this one here. How much did we want to raise again for this skiing trip? 3,000, I think. Well, I think these stamps are going to be a big chunk of that. Yeah. And would I surprise you if what I've seen up to now, if they're all this sort of standard, I think you're looking maybe 800 to 1,000 pounds for these albums. Why? Oh, God. Nice. Great. Does it have your stamp of approval? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Hayes, that's a terrible joke. And far too bad for such impressionable ears. Luckily, downstairs, Fiona's not kidding around with her latest collectible. This handsome fellow, the snuff taker Toby Jug, is estimated at 60 to 100 pounds, not a price to be sniffed at. You'd think I was good at this rummaging game now, but even us pros need a helping hand now and again. Rosie? Yeah? Do you know, the, do you know anything about this? Uh, no, it's my granny's. There is something on the back there. It's a date, 1963. Well oh, yeah. spotted, you see. Mm. I wouldn't have spotted that mm. enormous great date <laughs> scratched in. <laughs> How much would you pay for it? I don't know. It looks like it's made out of clay, so like ten pounds maybe. Ten pounds? <laughs> Shh! <laughs> don't do pull that. Paul. Yep. Rosie thinks this is worth tenner. All oh, right. Okay. <laughs> well, there you are. I think it's worth a bit more, even though they are clearly vandals. Well, exactly. Yes. <laughs> Beauty's in the eye of the beholder, I must say. You can't overlook these items. These sort of individually handmade pieces always have a, a, a collectability. I mean, is there any maker's mark or anything on it? No, there's a name. Rosie spotted the name. Oh, right. You could hardly miss that one, <laughs> could you, really? That's what I said. This is, this is Audrey Blackman. And one of her trademarks was uh, no faces, no sort of uh, fine points on the faces. So it's quite, quite spooky, really. So would this have been uh, individually made, handmade? Yeah. What Audrey actually did was develop her own clay. But because this clay was quite temperamental, she'd only ever make things by hand. So this is an individual piece of art. I think that's 150, maybe 200 pounds, that sort of price band. Good, let's take it with us. OK. Originally, I thought it was about 10 pounds because I just saw it and it looked like a, like a clay model. So yeah, this shows we're not very good at valuing things. <laughs> Don't be hard on yourself, Rosie. Just follow Paul's example. 
He knows an old desk will contain old treasures, and that this 1814 book on the costumes of Yorkshire is certainly that. Illustrated with watercolours, it's a collector's or dealer's lot. He gives it an estimate of 350 to 500 pounds. The kids of the Godwin family are a prominent part of everyday life round here. I think Joan is one brave lady. So how long have you been living here with all these children? They came. I think it was about nine years ago. I'd have to check on that. <laughs> so you've had nine years of, like, topsy-turvy grandchildren and yes. grandchildren's friends. <laughs> and how do you manage that? It seems to work out all right. You can imagine it gets pretty hectic at times. You've seen what it's like. So you're not banishing them to the other side of the world, to New Zealand, for a bit of peace? Uh, well, not entirely, no. <laughs> And why New Zealand? What's your connection with New Zealand? Well, I worked for a few years with um, a New Zealand woman and she decided to go back to New Zealand and she made me promise when she went that I would go and visit her. I had the most fabulous holiday there. So what's the idea behind this trip? You're going to take all of them? Well, the idea was to send them independently, really, so they could do what they want when they, they get there. And they just think it would be lovely and I think it would be lovely. I mean, I'd rather know that they're enjoying themselves in doing something like that than be sitting around here with a few bits of old furniture um, that, you know, I'll just leave and somebody will sell or give away. Now, I think you're absolutely right. I think it's crazy to have things gathering dust when you could turn them into something that, you know, people will remember for the rest of their lives. Well, I think so. And I was a little bit concerned, you know, that some people think that I, might think that I was doing the wrong thing. But everybody I've talked to and in particular my husband's best friend from his student days I thought it was a lovely idea if that's the way he thinks I'm sure my husband would have approved too the grandkids are only too happy to help Joan with her clear out it's clear to see that they love having her as part of their very large family Paul heads down to Fiona but isn't very impressed with her latest find all right Fiona what have you found hello you well this what do you reckon uh, put it back where you found it, I think. Okay, fine. <laughs> well, I must say, I like this table here. Look at this. What a cracker. Oh, yeah, we've had that for a while. It's a strange one, though, isn't it? So where's, where's this come from? Um, well, I know that it certainly belonged to my mother's family, and there is a story behind it. All right. My mother and her brother and sister lived in London during the war as children, and um, when the bombers used to come across on a raid, she and her brother and sister would hide under here because it's big and heavy. Really? to hide, yeah, in case the, something hit the house. Wow, and she remembers doing that? Yeah. I mean, wouldn't it be wonderful if these things could actually tell a story? Mm. I mean, that's been used in 1940 for that reason, but what was it doing 100 years earlier? You know, you're looking at a piece that's probably late 18th century, so you're looking sort of 1780, 1800, mm. and it, it's marvellous, but I don't think it's always been like this. Right. So if I just open this up here, that's the gate leg there. Oh, well, this tells me everything here. Can you see that? It actually goes past the end of the table. Oh, I see. But so that fit doesn't fit properly. Right. So that tells me it should at least be another another length there. So there's something not quite right about it. But at yeah. the end of the day, what we've got are very old pieces of oak. I mean, a lot of the time they used to actually use leaves from old ships or, or scuppered items. You know, it's really? like a form of reclamation, really. But it would be interesting to find out exactly what it yeah. comes from. Value-wise. 300 maybe to 500 pounds. Lovely. But we can't rest there, you know, we need to keep looking. Right. Okay, follow me. Well, I hadn't realised that originally it was much longer than the table that we obviously have now. And I thought it was interesting that the planks are supposed to be come from a ship. It does explain why it's such a heavy, heavy piece of furniture. We're sailing through our rummage today and downstairs Oliver is chanting new territories with this map of Kent, valued at 80 to 100 pounds. Joan has also found these decorative candlesticks that Paul gives an estimate of 80 to 100 pounds again. The day is moving along, but our family has certainly found their rummaging rhythm. Hey, how do work? Hi. Bang a drum. So tell me about this trip to New Zealand. That sounds very exciting. Have you been before? No, we haven't. My mother's been twice. She says it's lovely. And um, it's quite a big group to manage on holiday. Have you, have you been on many family holidays together? <laughs> All the time. All the time, really? <laughs> Um, we go to Yorkshire on walking holidays. Mm. Oh, Yorkshire, New Zealand's all the same. Exactly, yes. That's why you're going to like it so much. Yeah. <laughs> now, you and your mum own the house together. You left it, she was just telling me. So how do you feel about some of these things going under the, under the hammer? Well, I suppose I've grown up with most of them, but um, 
obviously now my priorities have changed. I've got the five children, and so I think it's nicer that we, you know, the children should be able to benefit now. And presumably it would be nice for your ground to have a bit of uh, quiet time. I think so, yeah, definitely. Do you think that might be a sort of secret motive <laughs> in sending yeah. you away? Yeah. <laughs> she couldn't send us much farther, could she? <laughs> <laughs> no. Because we make a lot of noise. Well, do you? <laughs> I can't believe you make a lot of noise, Poppy. That's not true, is it? <laughs> Oh. But what a great, it's a great setup you've got here. I mean, you know, you've got you know, your ground here, it's a lovely house. Mm, it's lovely. Yeah. Lovely place to live. For such a wonderful family trip, everybody is cleaning out the cupboards, searching for those choice collectibles the bidders will love at auction. What have you got in here? You get hidden from it? Upstairs in the bedroom, Rosie has turned art critic. What do you think of this? Let's have a look what you found. All right, that's good, isn't it? A painting. Yeah. And who is it? Um, I think it's by Rupert, Rupert Shepherd. All oh, right. Well, it's quite well known, actually. Do you like it then? It's okay. Yeah. It's a bit confusing though because this dog is going backwards. Because surely, if it's on the lead, it's going. It should be going that way. Right. You're quite observant, aren't you? Really. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. It's a shame he's not around to ask him what was going on here. You see. <laughs> so, have you any idea how much that might be worth as a modern artist? Um. I'm not very good at this, but £100, maybe? Well, I think you're dead right. I think that's okay. exactly the sort of figure. <laughs> so, is, is it just the one, or is there any more of them? I think there might be another one, but I have to check with my granny, because I'm still not sure about that one. Great. Well, if there is two, you're looking at a couple of hundred pounds. Yeah. But we do need to ask your granny first. Okay. So, let's leave it here for the time being, all right? Okay. Smash it. After a quick chat with Joan, she puts forward this antique watercolour with a great £300 price tag. The kids are embracing their task of turning this house upside down in the search for antique treasure. Every nook and cranny is checked, and Fiona gets her paws into this pair of 20th century marble lions, estimated at 60 to 80 pounds. Downstairs, Rosie and Joan's latest find could make Paul flip. Oh, no. Wow, look at this. Wow. So who's collected all these? My father-in-law and his father before him and possibly even his father before him, so it goes back a little way. And these date late 18th century, that's George III on there. So you're looking at 1790s, something like that. Uh, but these are called spade guineas, oh. uh, for the simple reason that the shield on the back looks almost like a spade. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what I'll do, in my pocket here, I have my trusty uh, magnifying glass. Mm -hmm. Do you want to have a look at that? Oh, right. You can actually see all the realm. When we've got the three lions there, which is England, We've got the lion rampant, which is Scotland. We have the, the harp, which is Ireland. Then we have the fleur de lis, which is France. And then we have another symbol at the bottom there, which is, I think, Hanover. Oh, so, so that represents the whole sort of empire at the time, really. Mm. Uh, but these are very clever. And of course, with them being gold, they were susceptible, really, to fraud. I mean, there's a big problem with them. So what they very cleverly did, they milled the edges. Can you see that? Oh, yeah. And what people used to do, will be to clip them. If you worked in a shop or anywhere that was handling lots of money, you would clip a tiny piece of gold off and then pass the coin on. And what you would end up with by the end of the week, you'd have a bag full of gold. So what they did, they put that milled edge around there that so you could see instantly whether anything's been clipped off and that's the real oh, genuine right. coin. It's very, very clever, isn't it? So those are wonderful. And what are these ones? Let's have a look. But well, that, that's Henry VIII. There we are. That's marvellous, isn't it? Look at that. Right. right. Well, for the coins I've seen, you're looking at least 700, maybe up to a thousand pounds. I mean, that's a serious collection. Mm -hmm. Well, that's well. well. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it time to cash him in? I, I think I'd, I'd want to think rather carefully about that. It's possible that I might decide to hang on to them a bit longer. Oh, here you are. Gosh, oh, hello, how are you? Hi, this, this tea family team business is brilliant, but it's exhausting. There's just people everywhere bringing things to be valued. What have you found? All right, well, we found a real treasure chest here. And from the coins I've seen already, we're looking at least £700. Oh. John's quite attached to them, though, for the oh, time right. being, I think. <laughs> well, our total today of all the estimates Paul's pulled in is £2,890. Mm -hmm. well, that's very good. 
So with that, with £700 extra, it would take us up to 3590 so way over the target. So it's okay for you to sit on the fence, I think. It's a great auction room we're going to. Mm -hmm. So everything, regardless of whether you sell that or not, should go. And here we come to the snow in, in New Zealand. <laughs> What a wonderful rummage we've had at Joan's house. The whole family has chipped in to find some excellent antiques. We have the oak table, possibly made from old ship's timbers. Over nine books of stamps, valued at 800 to 1,000 pounds. One of Paul's favorites, the bird's eye maple desk with its stunning craftsmanship. And finally, we have the coin collection, potentially worth 700 pounds. It all depends on whether Joan will let this treasured collection go. So it's been a couple of weeks since we rummaged through Joan Godwin's house in Cambridgeshire and we brought all the items we found here to Sorders and Oliver's Fine Art Auction in Sudbury. Now remember, Joan wants £3,000 to take her five grandchildren on a skiing holiday to New Zealand. So let's hope the bidders don't slope off when her items come under the hammer. The family arrives to a packed auction room. The buyers and dealers are out in their droves and it's great to see Joan's antiques getting their full attention. A fine art sale is all about quality. I've come to Sorders regularly, especially their fine sale. It always attracts sort of a lot of interest. It's got some really nice things. And uh, no, I'm a real fan. It's good. With the auction soon to begin, I track down Paul at the back of the room. Mr. Hayes. Ah. Oh, this is our dining table, isn't it? God, it looks great here. It looks much better here, actually. Than it, it does, actually, because the house was quite cluttered. And again, here, they, they're really showed off to best advantage. The auction room looks wonderful. It's full of really good antiques. This is a catalogued fine art sale. Now, we're not used to these, are we? Yes, yes. Everything we sell is fine <laughs> art. And what happens every three months, an auctioneer would keep back all the best bits and sell it all in one day. So is that going to give our items a boost? Yeah, I think it will, because what happens, you get all the big collectors and dealers from all over the world with that know it's here. It's all catalogued, it's all on the internet, all the telephone lines are in. So if we're going to sell it anywhere, this is the place to be. So what do you think is going to sell well? Uh, I think the stamp collection, I think that could do really well. Right. And of course we don't know whether Joan's going to bring the coins or not. No, that would do particularly well here, I think, actually. Mm. Uh, and also the, uh, the desk. That desk is an absolute belt, and I think if two people want that, that could be a real flyer. I'm excited. Let's go and find the family. OK. We can't wait to get this auction underway, and today's auctioneer, John Foster, has his favourites amongst Joan's antiques. In the early 19th century costumes of Yorkshire book, there's been huge interest in that one, so uh, who knows where it'll end up. It's such an exciting find. With that said, we're champing at the bit to get selling. We find the family minus a few members. Hello. Hello, oh, good morning. Oh, where's the little cheeky monkey Daisy? She's got chicken pox. Oh, so is that why Fiona's not here? Well, she's having to look after her. Have you all had chicken pox? Yes. Oh, have I have you had chicken pox? No. <laughs> you need to stand away. <laughs> Quarantine. Oh, I don't think I have, no, I can't remember. Well, health, health issues aside, have you bought the coins? Yes. Oh, that's um, Do you want to know why? Yes. Because Fiona told me that the happiest people she knows are the people who have the fewest possessions. Oh, that's so very Buddhist. Yes, I did. It's very deep. Are you feeling OK? <laughs> <laughs> you have a chicken box. No, I hope not. <laughs> well, that pushes our target way, way up over the 3,000 mark, which is very good news. Paul's very confident. Yeah, you've got some wonderful items. Your coin collection, that really does put the icing on the cake. But that desk as well, I think, will do very well today. <laughs> yeah, I think you've got some great stuff. <laughs> wonderful. Well, let's stop monkeying around and let's go and find our place. It's ready for the sale. <laughs> hey. Poor little Daisy and Fiona, but let's hope the only illness going around the sale room today is bidding fever. Remember, all antiques bought and sold today are subject to commission and VAT by the auction house. Final lots are checked and people get to their positions for the first of our items under the hammer. So, lot 42 is the Robert Morden hand-coloured map of Kent. Is this very rare? Well, the, if this is right, then it is a rare item, but there are lots of copies of this particular map maker. Uh, but we're looking at 80 to 100 pounds, but you never know it. Let's see how we go. can start this on commission straight in at 70 pounds. With me at 70 now. Any advance at 75, 80. With me at 80 now, on commission at 80 now. We're all done at 80 pounds, all done at 80, all done at 80 pounds. Yeah? <laughs> 
yeah. yeah. So, so you think it probably was a copy? Yeah, that, that's that's a price for for a sort of modern tinted copy. If it had been one I'd based, then it would have been a lot more. But that's great. Well done. That's a good start. The map leads the way to profit, making its low end estimate. The sale is really heating up, and it's time to find out if the bidders are art lovers or art critics. Lot 117, it's the Rupert Shepherd busy market scene. Signed and dated 1968, oil on canvas. OK, now, Rupert Shepherd. Remember him, that beautiful market scene? <laughs> very strange, wasn't it, that one? But, saying that, modern art's very saleable at the moment. We're looking for about £200 for this one. Commission bids here can start straight in at £180. On commission at 180 now. In the advance, 190, 200, 220, 230 takes me out. The gentleman at 230, 240 to bid, 240, 250, 260, 270, 280, 290. Telephone bidder here, that's amazing, isn't it? 300, 320, sir? He's only referring to a back to front dog. <laughs> No, 320 in the centre, 320. at 320 pounds. We're all done at 320. All done. Wow, oh, that's remarkable, isn't it? Well, <laughs> 320 pounds. So modern art makes modern money, brushing easily past estimate. It's back to more traditional fare with the next lot, the candlesticks. We're all done at 70. I'm going to sell them at 70 pounds only. All done at 70. But they sell underestimate. The next lot to be shown to the room was one of the auctioneer's favourites, the watercolour illustrated book of costumes. Now, I must admit, one of my favourite items out of all yours, and I found the most interesting, is that beautiful book of costumes. Oh, yes, that's lovely. Isn't it? The other ones, it's all of Yorkshire. It's a marvellous thing. Commission bids here, I have to start it straight in at £260, 270 to 80 290 300 320 350 380 400 420 450 480 500 520 550 580 600 620 650 680 700 720 750 750 780 takes me out the back room at 780 now 800 820 that's a very rare 850 880 900 920 this is amazing. Both Paul and our auctioneer, John Foster, were right about the book. Two phone bidders. And 50. Speaking on the phone. 1,200. And so 50. Has to say 1,300. And 50. 1,400. So, have our two phone bidders fought each other to a standstill? No. Two people really 1,600 pounds. We're all done. 1,650 in the Oh, someone in the room. 1,700. And 50. 1800. <laughs> sure. Oh, it's at 1800 on Frank's telephone at 1800 pounds. No, not one more. No, at 1800 on Frank's telephone. All done at 1800. All done. Oh, one. This is like a gold mine. 1800 pounds. 1800 pounds. I think what really made that book was the condition of those illustrations, and they're all hand tinted, hand painted. And it's something I missed there, but two people didn't. You had two telephone bids going there. 1800 is a fortune for a book, I think. I think you've done really well. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks. We don't even have time to get our breath back before the next big lot hits the room. Jones coins have created quite a stir in international circles. I come over here from the United States three times a year to look for coins. Uh, the British coin market in the States is very strong at the moment, and in this sale there's a very interesting group of um, coins in an old Edwardian box, and um, I think that might be the sort of thing that my customers would like. This is great news. As the coins are shown to the room, Paul explains how the auctioneer has dealt with the collection. So what, what the auctioneer has done, actually, is, is, is really been to your advantage. Everything's photographed, illustrated. Mm -hmm. We're opening on phone lines here. And also, they've put them into, I think it's one, two, three, four, six different lots. So they give them their best chance. And this is the first lot now. Lot number 17 is the two George III gold spade guineas. 550, 580. 580 With six lots of coins to get through, the first pounds selling at 580 pounds, all done at 580. <laughs> Sells amazingly. It's a great start. Let's see if the rest of the coins can do as well. Henry VIII silver groat and the Mary silver groat, two George III guineas. It's a Victorian gold two pound coin. And we're all done at 380, at 700 pounds, 850 pounds. 
that 460. That's staggering. The first part of the coin lots made a whopping £3,070. And if that wasn't enough, the bulk of the collection is still to come. Lot 23, large quantity of 18th century and earlier coins in the uh, coin box there. And I can start close commissions. I have to start straight in at £1,000. And 50, 1100, and 50, 1200, and 50, 1300, and 50, 1400, and 50, 1500, and 50, 1600, and 50, 1700, and 50, 1800, and 50, 1900, and 50, 2000. 2001. Look at this gentleman here. just got his hand up there. Yeah, really? Just one there. 2003, 2004, 2004 then beside me, 24, 25 at the back, 26, 2007, 2008, 2009, 3007, 3000, 31, 3000. You should have got lots of At 3000 then on my left, at 3000 pounds, I'm going to sell, it's your last chance, 3000, all done. £3,000. That was the whole total on one lot. I thought the auction did well to separate all the coins up because then we got loads. It was brilliant. So let's see how well we've done in the morning sale. Wow, what an amazing first half. <laughs> My heartbeats have just calmed down. Those coins. They were, they were marvellous. What a collection that must have been. And the, that watercolour book of draw, those costumes. Well, an unusual lot, that. I think there was lots of illustrations. They would all frame up nicely. I think that's the idea there. But I didn't see that one coming. That's fantastic. Isn't it? We've actually made £8,560. Wow. <laughs> just in the first half. We've got all the furniture and the paintings to go. Right, well, if you're going to go for a cup of tea, I've spotted something that I want to have a closer look at. So if I meet you back here, that be all right? Yeah. Joan and I need to find a seat after that run. Like the Godwin kids, Paul can't sit still for a minute when there's antiques to be inspected. Ah, oh, now, do you remember the market scene that Rosie wasn't particularly fond of? Well, look at this one. This is the way it should be done. This is done in the 19th century. This is high Victorian art. And if you look at it, it's a, it's a scene from a railway station. But it's so busy. We've got everything going on. We've got society at its best. And it's by a guy called William Powell Frith. And when he first did this painting in the 1860s, he had to rope it off. There was that much interest in it. But, of course, he has his imitators. And this one is an engraving or a copy of it. But it's a quite a clever process. What an engraver would do would be to get a huge sheet of steel, which is then rubbed with a wax. And then using a knife, he pierces away at the surface. The whole thing then is dipped in acid, and it pits the surface. When that's rubbed with ink, this is what you're left with, so you can print millions of them. Value-wise, £150, £200, a fraction of the cost of the original. Is it going to do better than ours, though? I'll have to wait and see.